Hi everyone, so Dr. Wexter is about to come on and we're talking today about the idiot Jillian Michaels who's giving dangerous advice on the ketogenic diet. And I call her an idiot for several reasons. I'm going to wait for Dr. Webster to get on board. But when we look to hire a professional, especially someone who's going to affect our health, our outcome, our daily life, then it's imperative that we do research on that, not just simply hire a professional because they're a doctor or a personal trainer or a chiropractor and the like. So, I think, hey, Doc, hey, hey, can you hear me? Yes, right. yeah, turning the volume up. So, here, here, okay. here's one of the things I'd like to kind of go off on, and I did this uh, with you on the, this, uh, this interview with me instead of just me doing it and then you coming in a little bit later on because it's really, really important when I say the idiot Jillian Michaels is giving dangerous advice on keto, I don't mean that she's advocating for it. Rather, she's against it. And she was on a TV interview recently, and we'll get into all of that. But I've been in this industry for about 31 years, okay? And I know all of the most accredited, respected certification programs that there are, at least in America. And so you have the National Academy of Sports Medicine. It's known as NASM. But there's different levels of that. So if you're going to hire a personal trainer, somebody who knows what they're doing, where they have some nutrition involved, you want the advanced one. You also want uh, Academy of College, uh, I mean, sorry, American College of Sports Medicine, ACSM. That's even better than NASM. Is there anything that tops that? Absolutely. There's one by Tom Purvis called RTS, which is Resistance Training Specialist. May not sound like much, but... You cannot get into these programs, Dr. Webster, some of them, unless you have a minimum of five years and a certain amount of like three uh, nationally accredited uh, certifications. And you have to have all this advanced certification or education because you won't be able to understand, you won't follow through or follow and understand to comprehend anything they're talking about because it's super advanced. Some of these courses actually take you into uh, uh, the morgue where they have cadavers and they're working on them. You learn a lot. It's very in-depth. You're not just a mindless personal trainer sitting there folding your hands, looking at your phone and counting for people. Okay, so it gets really, really in-depth and involved. And so I say that because Jillian Michaels doesn't have any of these certifications. I have a couple of them. She doesn't. I'm sorry? She doesn't. No. No, but I, I want to inform you in case you might want to be maybe a little impressed, which I doubt. Are you ready? All right. Okay. Ready. I'm Go going to read this because I got this under her bio. She holds two personal training certifications. One, this sounds really cool, National Exercise and Sports Training Association. Sounds cool. And then she has another one from American Fitness Association of America. Sounds really important. Jillian also has a certification in pedal, kettlebell concepts. Don't know what the hell that is. Uh, concepts part. And then she is a wellness and nutrition certification from American Fitness Professional Associates. Are you ready for this? Sure. These certifications are not only weak, I've never heard of them, but some of them have been around since the, the early to mid 90s. But here's the big one. They're online. Okay. They're online courses. You have a personal trainer who has an online course, run. Because one day you're a plumber, the next day you take a personal training course. I'm a personal trainer. Imagine if you have a doctor or a chiropractor who tells you that they receive their training courses online. I would say bye-bye. <laughs> well, the academic side might be fine, but not the hands-on side where you learn the actual craft. You don't learn adjusting online. You don't learn surgery online. I wouldn't think you'd learn something as hands-on as personal training where, where exercise form is paramount to your profession. It doesn't make much sense. It, it, it doesn't make sense. So that's the reason we're here. We're here for a couple of reasons today. Dr. Webster and I are going to help you in case you want to hire a personal trainer. Some of the things you're looking for, even a chiropractor, what do you look for? That's not the mainstay of the show. I'm just kind of leading with that because we want to make sure that the person's qualified. When you see somebody on TV, all of a sudden they're qualified. When somebody has MD behind their name, all of a sudden they're qualified. And that's that's not the way to go about life because you're going to be sorely misinformed and also in trouble with your health. So Dr. Webster and I thought that we would share some of the quotes from Jillian's 
interview on TV, and um, she specifically spoke about and poo-pooed the ketogenic diet. So, Doc, why don't you give the first quote uh, of that, and then, then I want to go off on something else about that. Okay, uh, when I found these, I did find an interview with Steve Harvey that she did where she was bashing this, but she also has a video on her, I guess on her website, which is where I took most of these quotes because it was all just her going through, just saying, talking for about six minutes straight about how terrible the keto diet is. So that's where all of these particular quotes from come from. But there is one other quote that I did grab from that Steve Harvey interview that we'll, we'll throw in here. But th these are all direct word for word quotes from Jillian Michaels about the keto diet. So the first one is, and I quote, how do we really decipher thousands of studies that are out there on all these diets. And the problem is what people will do to sell you a false bill of goods is take one study and blow that study out and act like this is the entire picture, unquote. All right, and so let's put this in perspective. I talked about highly regarded, well-respected personal training certifications that you, you cannot even get into unless you have a minimum of five years, three national, so national uh, uh, accredited uh, certifications that allow you to build up to get into some of these certifications to be a very, very high end personal trainer. Okay. So with that said, at the end of the day, you're not a doctor. She's nowhere near. No. That. She took online courses. So I established that. So now basically what she's saying, and I'm going to go down a little list here, doc, Dr. Eric Westman, medical doctor, Dr. Mark Hyman, medical doctor, Dr. Myhill, medical doctor in the UK, Dr. Mercola, medical doctor, medical doctor Yusef Ravinskov, I think that's how you say his name. He's known as Dr. Yes. He's known yes. as Dr. Med in, in Denmark, right? I know him, yeah. Right. They all refer to, or well, they all talk about the benefits of the ketogenic diet. But this last doctor I mentioned from Denmark said, referring in particular to cardiovascular risk that several health authorities have, and he didn't name them, have realized that the vilification of saturated fat was a mistake. And many trials have shown that doing the opposite may resolve the problem. Let me continue. Now we got the medical doctors out of the way. And there are many more, by the way, I just picked these out. We have PhD, Dr. Rhonda Patrick. By the way, you want to hear a great podcast? Listen to Dr. Rhonda Patrick. Uh, uh, Dr. Dominic D'Agostino, PhD, listen to his podcast. Dr. Pita Atia, he's also a medical uh, doctor. And this, this is interesting because he said after medical school, he spent five years at Johns Hopkins in general surgery. He said, and I quote, I was once in the wanker category of folks who spoke with authority about ketosis despite knowing somewhere between zero and nothing on the topic. I remember exactly where I was sitting in a clinic at John Hop Johns Hopkins in 2002 during my residency, explaining to a patient who was on the Atkins diet how harmful it was. He's now a big proponent of keto. All right, well, that doesn't surprise me because why would a medical doctor learn about normal states of ketosis? It, it, that's not something that they would ever treat. So why would they learn about it? It doesn't make any sense. They learn about the, the disease process or ketoacidosis, which is related, but it's not the same thing. So they learn about that, and it is quite harmful. So they learn about it, and they learn what to do about it. But that doesn't mean they've learned anything about the general physiology of, keto, of, of ketosis, which is what you do when you're on a ketogenic diet. So it's not even related. There's no reason to think that a medical doctor would have any knowledge based on their their time in medical school or residency it, it wouldn't it wouldn't even make sense that's not what they do that's not their specialty so so, of course so they don't but know. wait there's more <laughs> okay <laughs> none of these doctors phd or medical doctors took their course online i'm only uh, saying uh, that to <laughs> no kidding? i'm only saying that to establish more credit that you have this so-called personal trainer who yells at people or used to yell at people, make them feel bad about themselves. There's no fat person on the planet who's, who feels worthy and secure and is a happy person. I have plenty of several fat friends who have this incredible personality about them. I love them to death, and I won't mention their names. One of them is a female that often watches, and she has 100 pounds to lose. She's, all, she's five foot three, if that. 
And she said, and she has this incredible personality. She's always laughing. She makes me cry. I laugh so hard. And she said, let me tell you something, George, real seriously one time. No fat person is happy. Okay, so you're going to go there and yell at this fat person who, who can't t get a handle on their life? I, I, I would love for someone to show me every single person who's on The Biggest Fat Loser or The Biggest Loser, whatever it is, whether they won or not, to show me where they are today and how they feel about themselves with somebody yelling at them. So, so that pisses me off in and of itself. Then she's supposed to be this so-called expert, and she's putting down something she knows nothing about. Nothing. Apparently not. And, and to go back directly to her quote so we can make sure that we, we really hit these quotes exactly as they're, as they're stated. Yeah. She said there's thousands of quotes or thousands of studies, but yet somebody pulls out one single study. I just want to encourage you to Google keto studies. I didn't pull up all of the keto studies because I couldn't. There are too many of them. They've been, go they've been around for decades on so many things. You can't even imagine to, you can't even begin to imagine the depth and reach that these studies have. And there, I mean, there are study after study after study after study. Some of them short term, some of them longer term. I, I pulled up one uh, just the other day and it was talking about a six month trial, half of a year and saying, well, we know that over, you know, like four to six or eight weeks, we have this great weight loss and we have these changes in, in blood pressure and cholesterol levels. But what does it look like long term? Well, they did the study and come to find out HDL levels increased, LDL levels decreased. Blood pressure was better, triglycerides were better, blood sugar was better, obesity levels were better, and that's over what they call long term. So there are, there's an enormous amount of reasons. So, but let, let, the funny let, thing is, let's, let's add to this for one moment, just to add to what you're saying. The ketogenic diet was developed in the 1920s. The 1920s. This isn't a fad. It was developed for people with epilepsy, and it's wound up being a very a big complement to fat loss and other diseases. There's a company called Virta Health, V-I-R-T-A. They were on my radio show when I had my radio show and they're out of California and their number one and only goal was to reverse type two diabetes. The only thing they do is the ketogenic diet. That's it. Yeah. Okay, so in this, Let me tell you this. write up by the Let way, me... uh, I'm going to have a whole bunch of links of science. I'll have Virta Health in there so people can review this later on. So go ahead, doc. I was just going to say, this, the, the diet has been studied in its current understanding since the 20s, but the ketogenic diet has been around since human beings have been around. Right, but let's just, People let's have just talk about, what, for, for, let's, just, let's just refer to what yeah. we study. I mean, let, let, we got okay. to be fair. Number two, she says, yeah. and I quote, it throws your body into a state of emergency. That's what ketosis is. So let me go have a Sprinkles cupcake, you idiot. <laughs> You want to avoid that ketosis at all costs, George. Unbelievable. <laughs> ketosis is what happens when you lose body fat. It, she has been in ketosis for a lot of her life. When she goes to sleep, she's probably in ketosis for a lot of that time. She should get up and eat a. She should get up and eat a cupcake. That's not good. It's emergency, a danger, Will <laughs> Robinson. <laughs> One of the, the quotes when she was on the Steve Harvey show, and I didn't write this down, but. She starts in and saying, well, the ketosis diets is where, it, or the keto diets where you, you uh, stimulate the act of ketosis. And Steve Harvey looks at her like, that's dangerous, right? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, yeah. And, she, and then she kept going like, no, ketosis isn't dangerous. <laughs> ketosis means you're losing body fat. If you have 100 pounds to lose, it's impossible for you to lose that 100 pounds of body fat without embracing ketosis. You don't have to necessarily follow exactly the quote unquote keto diet that was written in a book necessarily, but you are going into ketosis one way or the other. So it's just silly to say that ketosis is dangerous. That's how we mobilize and burn our body fat. You want to go into number three? Sure. Go. So it's Jillian Michaels third quote. Go ahead and read it, Doc. There's zero calorie restriction on a ketogenic diet. So you have to have so you have a massive amount of oxidative stress. George, when you eat a ketogenic diet, can you eat 10,000 calories and still lose weight? Can you, more specifically, can you eat a ketogenic diet on 10,000 calories and be in ketosis? Yeah. No way. No, no, what I'm saying, yeah. It, no, what I'm saying, yeah, is 
I'll give you a fast example. People who, if you have a, an enormous plate bowl of bacon, and I'm being extreme, and you only eat that bacon, it's a lot of calories, and you can be in ketosis. However, that's not healthy for you. So when I say, yeah, we need a balance, we need the fiber, we need the veggies, we need all of that balance with it. So when I'm thinking calories and no, hold on. but but if you're having more calories than you're losing, that's a different story. Is that where you're going? Well, no, I want to I want to clear this up a little bit. You can't be you cannot be in ketosis if you're eating excess calories, even if your carbohydrates are zero, because excess calories will boost your insulin levels, even if it's primarily fat. That, that plate of bacon that you talked about has quite a bit of protein in it. Protein will at some point cause your insulin levels to go up and shut off the ketosis. Even if you're eating zero carb, zero carb is not the, doesn't equal ketosis. It's an easy way to get into ketosis, but you can't consume excess calories because that shuts off ketosis, just like eating a bunch of sugar shuts off ketosis. So no, you can't, it's by definition, it's ridiculous to say that ketogenic diet has an unlimited calorie amount. It's, it would be the equivalent of her saying, you can eat as many carbs as you want as long as your carbs don't exceed 50 50 grams right that's, that's like that, that, that doesn't work right by definition they're the opposite of each other so to complement what you were saying i can't even eat a whole bunch of calories like i used to eat i'm so full from the fat so when she says to her point that you get to eat that that you can you, there's no calorie restriction that's true but right. before the ketogenic diet i was aware of my calories on the ketogenic diet, I don't, I don't care about my calories. I just eat, and it's very difficult for me to eat enough calories. I'm so damn full. Right. And it, so it nourishes way, you in a way. You bring up a very good point, yeah. and I knew this already, but I wasn't thinking about this with the bacon. Yeah, there's a lot of protein in bacon. So if you have too, many pro too much protein, it's gluconeogenesis, and it turns into glucose. It's not unlike a carbohydrate or, or having too many carbohydrates. So, yeah, very good point. And, yeah, it's, it's – um, I had a point, but I think I lost. You want to go Sorry. to number four? Let's go for it. There's no this again. Just for people just joining us, we're talking about uh, Jillian Michaels, who was recently on TV that that was completely uh, uh, trying to and uh, trying to annihilate the ketogenic diet. The disadvantage is for the people who look up to her and think she actually knows something, they will stay away from it. They'll be afraid of it. Um, the people who don't know anything. Uh, the people who do know something know she's full of it and they can do more research. Again, I'm providing a bunch of links here in this um, uh, 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 video afterward. It'll be put on YouTube and we'll, 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 we'll guide you to that. Anyway, so her quotes are completely off base. And here's number four. There's no consideration of timing with regard to food. So your autophagy, if I say it correctly, uh, autophagy, uh, process is totally out of whack. Well, we know that that's a physiological process that deals with the destruction of cells and maintains homeostasis or basically normal function. How do you say it, by the way? Autophagy is how I would Autophagy. say it. So you I, emphasize the, the O? The, yeah, it doesn't matter. Uh, and, the, and the ridiculous part about this whole statement is she doesn't even explain what autophagy is. I have no idea whether she knows what autophagy is. Maybe she does, maybe she doesn't. But she, you, can't, you can't use a word that you don't even know how to pronounce, Georgia. You've been in this industry for 30 years and just throw it out there as if the, the world as a whole just, oh, autophagy is out of whack. Yeah, because your timing isn't taken into consideration. No one knows what that means. No one knows. What, I mean, that's so ridiculous. And she may not either. But even if she did, come on, she doesn't even expand upon that. But that's not the worst part about this. Oh, by the way, autophagy is just where, you, where you're cleaning up excess proteins that your body makes, and you only do that when you're in sort of a ketogenic state or a, or a low insulin state. I mean, so there's, there's that, if you don't know what autophagy is. Uh, but the, mo the, the biggest thing about this statement, George, is could, do you use timing when you're on a ketogenic diet personally? <coughs> Excuse me. You know I do because of Dr. Sachin. Right. Right, of course. So to say that there's no consideration of timing with regard to a ketogenic diet, have you ever heard any consideration of timing when you talked about a paleolithic diet or a high grain, low fat diet or really or Mediterranean diet or any diet for that matter? Timing is not generally part of it. They, those diets tell you what you should eat and how much of it you should eat. That's what they say. That's what the diet's for. Timing can be implemented 
or incorporate it into any of those diets and you'd still be in a keto diet or a paleo or a this or a that or whatever. So what she did was she created a, created a straw man. She created something that wasn't relevant. She, it's easy to defeat that straw man. And she takes that as if since she defeated the straw man, she defeated the ketogenic diet. And they're not related at all. Yeah. So let's go to number five idiotic comment from Jillian Michaels about trying to dismiss the ketogenic diet. It's very high in animal fats and animal proteins, diet rich in saturated fat, diets rich in saturated fat are poor for our telomeres, oxidative stress, increased inflammation. She said your nutrient sensing pathways that are related to the health of your metabolism are overrun with constant food. I put that in bold, by the way. Heavy fats, I put that in bold, by the way. Lots of animal protein, we know hurts your telomeres, and on and on and on. Okay, so you have whatever you're going to say, and then I'll interject. Well, the first thing I want to say is I had to listen to that about 12 times because I wanted to get that exactly word for word. Okay. Because when you read it or say it out loud, it sounds so ridiculous. It's, it's just a bunch of jumbled thoughts just all coming out. And none of them are, are real at all. Diets rich in saturated fat are poor for our telomeres. Telomeres are the end caps on your, your chromosomes. Basically, as we, we age, the telomeres can shorten, and that, that basically accelerates the, the aging process. Or we can do things that are healthy for us and slow down that shortening process or even lengthen them in, in certain instances if we do things that are really, really good for our health. Um, I looked up a study, it was in the Public Health Genomics 2017, the effects of diet on telomere length, a systemic re review. And it looked at different types of diets. Some of these diets were, were high in saturated fat because that was important because her direct quote was that saturated fats poor for our telomeres. There was a high fat diet, high saturated fat diet. There was a Mediterranean diet. There was a low fat diet. There was a high omega-3 diet. There was a lot of different diets. And the conclusion to this study that looked at all these was there is no effect on diet on telomere length based on the evidence. No difference between the high saturated fat diet versus the low saturated fat diet or any of the in-between diets as far as telomere length is concerned. So that wasn't true <laughs> right off the top. The next thing is she said oxidative stress and increased inflammation. George, the metabolic process that happens when you are in a ketogenic diet <clears throat> that happens before you're in ketosis is your insulin levels and your glucose goes down. We know from study after study after study that when your glucose and insulin go down, inflammation goes down. Insulin literally is controlling your inflammatory process. When insulin goes up, inflammation goes up. So she had that completely backwards, claiming that a ketogenic diet causes inflammation to go up. It's absolute nonsense, and it's 100% wrong. And the next thing is oxidative stress. George, do you eat spinach or greens on your your diet when you're on, on, in, in keto, <laughs> would you say you have more antioxidant rich foods than the average American has when you're on your ketogenic diet? <laughs> I think so. There's no restriction um, on, on antioxidant consumption. You can eat a lot of those antioxidant rich foods as long as you don't exceed your, your total sugar carbohydrate intake um, limits. And I understand that, but that, you can eat a lot, George. I started looking these things up, like how much spinach you can eat a cup of spinach has about one gram of carbohydrate so you can eat a 10 cup sal that's a huge that's more than you would ever eat by the way have you ever eaten a 10 cup sal i don't think i have no way you couldn't eat that maybe four or five if you're really trying to scarf it down so four or five cups of spinach you're talking four or five grams and that has a ridiculous amount of antioxidants so it's nonsense to say that that um that you're having oxidative stress the last point of this is <clears throat> You don't have to eat a massive amount of animal fats on a ketogenic diet. Do you eat a lot of olive oil, avocado, walnuts? None of those are animal, animal fats or animal proteins. You might be eating some animal products, and, you, and that's fine, but you don't have to eat a lot of animal products. It's not even recommended necessarily when you do a ketogenic diet. So 
Take it away. So here's what I know about telomeres. Telomeres do actually shorten as we get older, whether you want them to or not, because we have stress on our body. The body's not as healthy as it was. We're dying from the time we're born. You say, well, hold on, we're growing up, but that's part of the dying process, right? With that said, if you eat horribly, you speed up the shortening of the telomere. And when you speed up the shortening of the telomere, you're aging faster and or inviting disease. Here are some other things that may surprise you about telomere shortening. Heavy weight lifting. So if you're a bodybuilder, heavy weight lifting, extreme, I mean like extreme weight lifting, okay? So power lifters, bodybuilders, yeah. marathon runners, talk about oxidative stress and stresses on the, 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 the body, that, that also. Too much food, so too many calories like we were talking about earlier. Um, uh, lack of exercise. What we know for a fact is having a balance of moderate exercise, which I'll never do because I like something a little more intense. And if I die tomorrow, that's fine. At least I'll, they'll, look, they'll look at the coffin and say, oh, he never looked so good. <laughs> so, but another thing that we know helps with uh, uh, keeping telomere, preventing telomere length, lengthening from shortening and replicating fast. And that's the one that people really need to know. It's one thing that they're going to get shorter as we get older, but if you're doing things like, like I mentioned earlier that are, are unhealthy for your telomere length, they're actually replicating faster. They're getting shorter faster. You don't want that, trust me. So one thing we right. know that keeps them longer or slows them down is meditation. Okay, ah, meditate, oh, absolutely. I did some studying on this many years ago. Meditation, uh, uh, moderate exercise, of course, a healthy diet, but then you have to look genetically at what's a healthy diet and where you currently are now. So th those are really important factors when we're talking about n not fat loss necessarily, but just, just health, overall health, right? So let's go into number yep. six, idiotic Jillian Michaels statement. Go ahead. A couple more things. Strong, strong heart family study looked at processed meats versus unprocessed meats, and they found that unprocessed meats do not, are not associated with telomere shortening at all, although processed meats were uh, associated with telomere length. Uh, high insulin levels increase inflammatory markers. That's in the Journal of the American Medical Association Archives Journal. Um, it concluded that moderately elevated levels of insulin increase the levels of inflammatory markers and beta amyloid, which is the placking that occurs in the brain. So that's what happens when insulin levels increase. So I just wanted to show you that that the studies back up what we're saying, and they completely contradict what Jillian Michaels threw out there. Uh, uh, so so, so, so no, to add to that, Doc, I'm glad you said that. To add to that is the difference between grass-fed beef and corn or grain-fed beef, right? That'll affect insulin levels as well. That's, so this is not just about, hey, not you know, having grass-fed beef and uh, not having hormones, but it's much more than that because it affects you. Just because you're having protein doesn't mean it's, it's going to act exactly the same way or it needs to for our health. Right. And one last comment about this. The, this study concluded that the diets didn't matter when it comes to telomere. Those diets are only looking at different ratios of different types of fats is what they primarily looked at. It doesn't mean that a diet that doesn't have any, any vegetables or fruits or antioxidant rich foods it has the same outcomes for telomeres as a diet that's basically onion rings and, and corn dogs. Okay. That's not what, what they're, they were trying to say at all. So uh, we know that antioxidant rich foods in fact do have an impact on telomere length. So, so when we say diet, it's just the, the different types and balance of fats don't seem to have an effect on telomere length. All right, so let's go to number six. Jillian Michael says the number one way to sensitize one's body to insulin is exercise. So is she implying that food doesn't profoundly affect insulin? Totally threw me off. Yeah, well, the question is, I would say, is it? I don't really know. I've, I've researched this a lot. I did more research recently because I wasn't sure whether she was right or wrong or, or in between. And this is what I found. Studies show that certain types of exercise are good at, at improving insulin sensitivity. Uh, certain types don't have any effect whatsoever. A, a power lifter, George, when they do six to 10 reps, they don't get into that, that burn or that lactic acid anaerobic phase that happens. They don't seem to have much of an impact on insulin resistance. Whereas if you do the that more moderate high intensity stuff, where you, where you push yourself into the 13 plus rep range and you start feeling the lactic acid burn, it seems to, seems to have an effect. Also walking, really low impact stuff, doesn't seem to have an effect on, on insulin sensitivity. So we know that as far as exercise goes. Another thing about exercise, we know that when you exercise, 
intensely and you sensitize yourself to insulin, after about two or three days of not exercising, you're basically back to where you were before you started exercising. So it's, it's not really long lasting. Uh, we also know that, that lowering your total calories or lowering your total carbohydrates or doing whatever it takes diet wise to lose body fat, that makes a big difference when it comes to insulin sensitivity and doing diet and exercise has even a better effect than one or the other. So let's go. But I've never found anything. I've never found anything that says that exercise is the number one way to sensitize yourself to insulin. I just don't see that anywhere. You're making quite. things up. Hyperbole. Let's go to number seven. Go ahead, read it. Through a common sense diet <laughs> where we don't eat too much, we eat real foods, and we have balanced macronutrients. I can give you all those benefits and none of the negative side effects of keto. So, George, what I would ask you first is, when you do keto, do you eat too much? Uh, absolutely. I eat less. Okay. Do you eat real foods? Absolutely. <laughs> and do we have a balanced macronutrients? What does that even mean? It's balanced, balanced macronutrients. It's, it's, so, so here's the way I look at it. First of all, let me say this. She didn't say what the negative effects of keto are. I, 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 so, so we can't even refute that. But um, the balanced macronutrients are based on each diet. So paleo has its balanced amount and, you know, the Hollywood diet has its, you know, the cookie diet. Everybody has their balanced amount of macros for that specific eating protocol. So it's balanced. You just may not agree with it, but it's balanced. And she started this off with a common sense approach. George, what you think is common sense is maybe not exactly what I think is common sense. And it may not be what Jillian Michaels thinks is common sense. It's just what we all tend to believe is true. So therefore, we claim that as our common sense. And therefore, balance may be 33, 33, 33 is protein, fat, and carbs. Or it may be low, low fat, high protein, moderate carbohydrate, or, or high carbohydrate, moderate protein, low fat. There's no such thing as just balanced macronutrients. It's whatever we think, uh, whatever we think is best. And I say, let's jump into what science says is the best and what studies say is the best and say, well, that seems to be where our bodies are in balance. There's another statement that she made that ties into this exact same thing. And I want to bring this up now. It's, she said, your cells, your macromolecules are literally made of protein, fats, and carbohydrates, and nucleic acids. So she's saying that our body is made of fat, protein, and carbohydrate. So she's claiming that we need to have kind of an equal balance of fat, protein, and carbohydrate. Ritz crackers and the problem is, cupcakes. <laughs> she, she might not even be saying that. But what she's, what she's implying doesn't match reality. Because when you look at how much protein our body is structurally made of and how much fat our bodies in certain areas, especially our brain and our nervous system and our endocrine system, how much fat those organs are made of and how much carbohydrate our body is structurally made of, there's almost, there, there is some carbohydrate. I give her this. Technically, there is some carbohydrate, but it's almost nothing. It's nothing. You're, you could say that, I, I don't even, I, I should throw these out there, but Protein, well over 50% of our structural part of our body is protein. A huge percentage of the remaining is fat, and almost, almost zero is, is carbohydrate. Well, like, like, I mentioned, like I mentioned on last week's uh, show that we did, the brain is made of 60% of fat. The brain. Yeah, and, or, or more, yeah. And uh, it uses about 20 to 25% of our energy through the entire body, everything, the brain uses that much every single day. So if you're feeding it carbohydrates, you're not feeding it what it needs. Not that we don't need a type of carbohydrate, because her next quote here is the, that we're stripping our body of certain fruits that have a ton of antioxidants. Well, no, that's totally wrong, because if you actually studied and understand keto, you're supposed to have berries, cherries, berries, low glycemic fruits like um, green apples. But it's not the type of macro, it's not the type of carbohydrate, it's the, it's the amount of carbohydrates that you need to have for the day, like I mentioned last week. However, on a ketogenic diet, it is important to have a certain type of carbohydrate, high fibrous veggies and low glycemic fruits, because we want those things that keep us satiated longer and the nutrients from them. So that one's completely knocked out of the water also. 
Right, and when you look at the foods that you could eat, even if you went to an extremely low carbohydrate diet, spinach, kale, romaine lettuce, Swiss chard are all packed with antioxidants. The brassicas, like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, asparagus, packed with antioxidants. The quercetin-rich foods, like red onions, red cabbage, loaded with antioxidants. The catechins, green tea, dark chocolate. Dark chocolate, George, has less than one gram of carbohydrate per square of dark chocolate, and it's loaded with a, an important antioxidant is called a catechin or EGCG, the same stuff that's in green tea. All those foods I mentioned are very low carbohydrate, but are packed with a variety of different antioxidants and polyphenols, which she says the keto diet is missing. It's simply not true. Be beyond that, the last thing I want to mention about this is we talked about, talked last week about how once you get fat adapted after about a month, month and a half or so, depending on the person, you want to cycle off of this periodically. During those cycling off periods, just boost up your berries and, and your sweet potatoes, and you're getting tons of variety of antioxidants by doing that. So hold on, on hold your on. cycling off days. Hold on, let, let, let yeah. me clarify this because this could be dangerous for people. I created the keto cycling in my keto cleanse that I have. Okay. And it's very important that people understand keto cycling. Genetically, what I found out, someone like me will become fat adapted much faster than someone who's who's usually overweight and has... The World Health Organization said air pollution kills 7 million people per year. Our body has a natural ability to detoxify. However, it wasn't designed to handle the constant burden of unhealthy food and air pollution. To tackle this problem, we created the Keto Cleanse. Ketosis occurs when your body runs out of carbohydrate stores and begins using fat for energy. The Keto Cleanse forces your body to produce ketones, which naturally switches you from a carb burner to a fat burner. You won't miss unhealthy carbs when you add high fats such as bacon, cheese, guacamole, and other favorite foods to help you become a fat burner. And for the nerd in you, we'll provide the science of how this process works. You won't feel restricted by the food you love on the Keto Cleanse. Tim Tebow loves keto. Check out the video on our site. Visit 21daybodymakeover.com slash keto now and click on Keto Cleanse. You'll receive cleanse supplements, a keto cookbook with desserts such as keto brownies, and grocery lists, recipes, and exercise videos. That's 21 Day Body makeover.com slash keto has weight to lose so take it could take them two to three months to be keto of, of fat adapted yeah. where me it was only a month okay number one number two when you do keto cycling the way i do it is i'll pick two days a week i'll increase my carbohydrates substantially to 60 or 70 percent not five percent or ten percent but yeah. when you do that you cannot keep your fats high You'll literally kill yourself if you're eating bacon and all these other fats and super high carbohydrates because that's the typical American diet anyway. So you have to take your fat down to 5 or 10%. Your carbohydrates super high, and your protein stays the same at 20 to 25%. So go ahead. And you do that about two days a week, right? Correct? Correct? Let's, let's, Once let's just, just to make it easy, let's say it's Saturday and Sunday. And then Monday through Friday, I'm back to keto again. And the point is those carbohydrates that you're introducing on Saturday and Sunday – could be the things that she mentioned, the berries, the, the cantaloupe, the things that are rich in the antioxidant, the, in antioxidants that you might be missing by eating all these other antioxidant rich foods. But I'm also eating so, black, okay. but doc, I'm also eating black rice. I mean, I'm eating, like I love, I, so you talk about the dark chocolate earlier. I don't like dark chocolate. However, I found a way to like it. I have a mixture of cashew and almond butter. It's, it's literally when I keep, you keep hearing me refer to sprinkles cupcakes and like all these podcasts that we're doing, whatever the hell you want to call these things. And I love the sprinkles cupcakes, but not anymore. I haven't had a desire for that or pizza in seven or eight months, seven months now. Okay. But my sprinkles cupcake is a green apple with this mixture of cashew and almond butter. The reason I, I throw the quotes up is because it's still super high carbohydrates. It's not a sprinkles cupcake. However, Let's just run through this again. Did it in one of the other shows that we did. One green apple has between 20 and 25 grams of, of carbohydrates. That's, that's like your carbs, almost your carbs for the day. But yeah. cashew butter, two tablespoons of cashew butter has nine to nine and a half grams of carbs. If you have only two tablespoons, which I don't because I shovel it in my mouth, I'm at my carbs for the entire day. That means I can't have salad later on. I can't have my veggies later on because I've done my carbs through the day. So I'll have to have half the apple and two grams, uh, two tablespoons of that nut butter, which is, again, mixed with the almond butter because almond butter is about four and a half grams of carbs for two tablespoons. So it's just plain. Okay. Right. Okay. 
but bottom line is you're not even low on antioxidants or polyphenols no. while you're on this diet at all. No. In fact, if you do it right, I would say you're much, much higher in antioxidants than 99.9% than .9 of the people walking the earth. Yeah. So let's go to her last comment. Jillian Michael's last comment trying to dismiss the keto diet. Want to read it, Doc? When you cut out beta carotene, which is one of the top things to keep your telomeres long, something like keto is detrimental on so many levels and the amount of benefit is so small. Which, All right, I, I looked up the top three common foods that are rich in beta carotene. One is the sweet potato. It has 13 milligrams of beta carotene um, and for one cooked cup. Number two is the carrot, also 13 milligrams beta carotene for a cooked cup. Number three is spinach, one, cooked, one cup of cooked. Rather than 13, 13, it has, you would think like a half, right? No, it has, it has 11. It has virtually the same amount of beta carotene as sweet potatoes or carrots, which are touted for their beta carotene content. Because when you Spinach see the orange color, you think, okay, beta carotene. That's how we were taught when we were younger, right? That orange color is, or the red color is, is all of those. Uh, right. But, but, but because those things have nothing else. They have nothing else, so you see the orange. When you have spinach, which has just as much beta carotene, it has a lot of other antioxidants. Chlorophyll being one of them has lots of chlorophyll and covers up the orange color. If you stripped all the other things from spinach, spinach would be or orange, just like a carrot, because it has just as much beta carotene. Here's the thing, though. Spinach has 41 calories for that, that 11 milligrams of beta carotene. A sweet potato has 258 calories for that same amount or virtually same amount of beta carotene. So you're not missing out on beta carotene, which is the one thing that she touted, because it's detrimental on so many levels, George. So many levels, like the no beta carotene. So we have a bunch of people on here. If anybody wants to ask a question or make a comment, love to have you guys do that before we end the show right now. Um, so going back to the beginning of the show, whenever you're going to seek out a professional, make sure you're seeking out a professional who's actually qualified, not because they're on TV and they're popular and they make a lot of money or they're pretty or fit. It doesn't mean whatever works for them is going to work for you. And when someone dismisses something, I don't care what you're discussing, politics, health, if somebody dismisses something, um, let, me, let me stop for a moment. I have a business idea and I wanna share a business idea with someone and someone immediately dismisses it. Let's say somebody in the financial services arena. This is their profession, they've been doing it for a while. Yeah, I've been, I've been researching something over here they've not researched. Right away they dismiss it because they don't know about it but they think they know about it. When someone is absolute, they live in an absolute world, there's no questions, they don't wonder, they don't say let me look that up, they immediately dismiss it. They've lost all credibility with me. They're done. They're out. And so I don't care what the topic is. If you dismiss without looking at the facts, just because it doesn't align with your narrative, then you are not going to be someone I, is, who's my go-to. As a matter of fact, I stay away from you and I won't recommend you to anybody. And the same thing with Dr. Webster and, and myself. Don't listen to us. Do the research because we did and we have all the facts to prove it. So, so there's that when right. it comes to picking a doctor, a professional of any kind, right? The other one is making sure that you're looking at all the research that I'll have in this video. It's going to be on YouTube also. We'll put a link on, on, on Facebook. Um, and you can see a lot of the research, not all of it, but there's a lot of research where we provide facts. We're not just spewing this stuff, stuff out to make Jillian look bad. She did that on her own. We want to say also to share this with your friends because we only have access to our friends on our wall, so it really helps if you share. If you want to interact with us right now, you can. Doc, do you have any closing thoughts? Well, uh, I think a giant animal just walked behind you. Yeah. Did you see That's that? That's my fatty. That's my baby boy. <laughs> huge. You can see him? So, something you may not have mentioned that, that I found out is that Jillian Michaels has a financial interest in a soda company, that it's a, like an alternate Alternate to sodas is what I understood it as, where you're drinking a lot of sugary water, uh -huh. basically. Uh -huh. So uh, that doesn't really jive with keto. So that, I think she has kind of a financial interest in bashing keto and saying, no, let's not worry about that. Let's, let's look over here. And I'll also say to compliment that doc that she's probably just trying to stay relevant because she's not on that show anymore. Probably so. You know, so, so there's that. But, but it's just because a news organization or a show has a certain thought that they want to dismiss because they're, they're, they don't know about it and they immediately want to dismiss it. And they find somebody they align with who wants to dismiss it. Now all of a sudden they've got a show, right?
instead of right. a yeah, television just, show where you have somebody on. Like if somebody wanted me to interview me on, on keto or, or something like this that is not my strength, even though I'm pretty darn good at it, I would not do it by myself. I'd have a doctor on with me who understands the research and whether it's you or someone else to compliment where I may be wrong, what I might be missing, to, to recall the studies she was on by herself. She didn't know about it. She just dismissed it. And all of a sudden, people take her word for it. And that is dangerous. It's irresponsible. Yeah, and just, because, and just because Steve Harvey says that the diet might be dangerous or ketosis might be dangerous doesn't mean it's dangerous. Because Steve Harvey, as we know, has been wrong before. Really? If you're... Steve Harvey? Yeah, he's been wrong. With that smile? <laughs> Dr. Steve you Harvey. You can't lie. Well, you can't be wrong with that smile. <laughs> you remember the the big mess up that you had with oh, the yeah. the uh, Miss Universe? Yeah, he makes mistakes. Yeah, those <laughs> All right, so good deal. Uh, my website twenty one day body make.